Hey guys, what's up? I'm Mike Levitsky. Welcome to week four or day 22, less than a day streak. Today we're going to talk about jazz comping and different comping styles. So I'm going to show you seven approaches that you can use when you're comping a big band or a combo or even a trio or something like that to catch the hits and play different stuff. I'm gonna demonstrate what all seven of these sound like. I'll talk to you about how to approach them. And then at the end of the video, I'll have kind of a, a montage, if that's the right word, I don't know what the word is, where I play all seven styles kind of back to back to back to back to back to back to back so you can hear what they sound like uh, in the context of kind of this backing track that I made. In this video, you're gonna hear me playing to a backing track that I created. It goes along with Ted Reed's Syncopation, page 38, number one. I just used the rhythms from that first line, but it's great for practicing along too. So I encourage you, click in the description below and go to that video and use it as a practice aid. So there's 80, 100, 120, and 150. All those tempos, and each one plays for roughly about five minutes, and it's just this rhythm. All right, so I'm gonna teach you seven approaches to how to do this, and then I'm gonna tell you the number one thing you need to do when you play jazz. Stick around to the end of the video to hear that. Way number one. This is by far the easiest, the most basic, but it works. That's just to play a swing ride cymbal pattern, two and four on the hi-hat, and just let the horns do what they're gonna do. One, two, a three, four, a one, two, a three, four. So some things that you can try to do is emphasize two and four. One, two, a three, four. A one, two, a three, four. Or you can try to emphasize the quarter note. So one, two, a three, four. A one, two, a three, four. So let's take a listen to this style in context with the backing track. Style number two is gonna be playing swing time on the ride cymbal, two and four on the hi-hat, and then adding a rim click either on beat four, on beat two and four, or on beat two with a high tom, kind of doon doon on beat four. So that would sound like this. The first one is just on beat four. One, two, a three, four. A one, two, a three, four. A one, two, a three, four. The next one is gonna be two and four. One, two, a three, four. A one, two, a three, four. And then finally with Tom hits on beat four. One, two, a three, four. And one, two, a three, four. A one, two, a three, four. One, two, three, four. Let's take a listen to that with the band. Number three is called chopping wood. So this is swing ride cymbal pattern, hi-hat on two and four, feathering the kick drum. You can drive the kick drum, but I recommend feathering the kick drum, which just means lightly playing the kick drum. Instead of like that, you wanna just kinda lightly play the kick drum. And then two and four, nice and loud on the snare as rim shots. So that'll sound like this. Now you can play a shuffle pattern. You can also play a shuffle pattern with the left hand. Or you can crash cymbal on two and four. Let's hear that with the backing track. Approach number four is to catch all of the notes with the left hand. So this is if you've ever been through like Jim Chapin's book uh, or if you've gone through uh, Ted Reed's syncopation book doing this, you're going to play cymbal time, two and four on the hi-hat. You can feather quarter notes on the bass drum if you want or you can not play the bass drum and you're just going to play all of the rhythms that are in that line on the snare drum. <laughs> 
So that'll sound like this. Ready, go. One, uh, a three, four. One, two, uh, a one, two, three, and, and one, and a three. Without me counting. All right, and with the backing track. Next, we're going to play the ride cymbal and the bass drum together on all of those rhythms. And at first, we'll just do that. Then we're going to fill in all the other notes, all the other triplets with the left hand. So for instance, the first measure is one, uh, a three, four. Uh, bop, 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 bop. And we'll fill in the triplets. Bop, 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 bop. Bop, 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 bop. One t ta, two t ta, three t ta, four t ta. Then you're gonna do two and four on the hi hat. So let me play the measure with just the bass drum, the cymbal, and the hi hat, and then I'll add in those triplets. Now with the triplets. All right, let's hear that with the backing track. Right, this next style I call Bobby style. Uh, I learned it from a teacher that I studied with named Bobby Dominguez, and he taught me this, and this is a way to kick big band figures. And basically, I mean, there's a couple of little nuances and things to it, and maybe we'll look at some other figures along the way. But basically, you put all the long notes on the ride cymbal. So any quarter note you're going to put on the ride cymbal. You put all the short notes on the snare drum. So if you look at the figure, it's going to be uh, one and, because we have an eighth note and then a quarter note to start it off of. So one and, and three, four. Measure two would be one, two. Now here's uh, kind of something that, this technique does that's a little strange is you're gonna play where there's not a note. So you see measure two, there's a rest, but we have a quarter note on the and of three. So we're gonna play that eighth note rest on the snare drum to set up that quarter note on the and of three. So measure two is gonna be one, two, three, and. and we're gonna play the and of four on the snare and then the one on the cymbal. So and one, now we're into measure three. We're gonna play three and then four and and then we have two eighth notes, so we're gonna play two snares. And one, and, and three. So that whole measure would sound like this. And you're gonna keep two and four on the hi-hat. If you can't keep two and four on the hi-hat when you first start, that's okay. But you wanna be able to add that in. So it's gonna sound like this. One, two, three, four. One, and, and three, four. One, two, three, and, and one, two, three, and, and one, and, and three, four. Now one other thing you can do is when you're playing those quarter notes, you can fill them in with kind of anything you want as long as that symbol is on the quarter note. So I'll play some triplets on those. So let's try that again. One, two, three, four. One and, and three, four. One, two, three, and, and one, two, three, and, and one and, and three. One and. The final way that you can approach this, or at least that I'm going to talk about, there's a lot of other ways that you can approach it, is just sort of aimless comping. Like some some drummers, like uh, you know, a lot of new guys, even me sometimes. Like if I'm not really thinking or paying attention, uh, you kind of stop listening and you just start playing whatever chatter you know you can make. So you just start playing time, and then whatever your kick, snare, and hi hat have learned in the practice room. So you play something like that, and then you just kind of play that over top of the, the band. And that would sound like this. All 
All right, guys, so that's seven comping approaches. I know we didn't go super in-depth on each one. I just wanted to kind of introduce you to the idea of different ways to approach the music. There's a lot of choices that you have to make. You might think, oh, I'm just going to sit down and just play jazz. Well, there's a lot of choices that you're making. So the number one thing, this is the number one thing. All right, here's the number one thing that you need to do when you're playing jazz music. You need to listen. Listen, 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 listen. Not just to yourself, but to the band. You got to get really good at listening. Jazz is a music of conversation. And so you're listening to what the other guys are playing, and you're listening to how what you're playing fits into what the other guys are playing. And if you can get really good at this, I promise it'll help you with your rock playing and with your funk playing and your gospel playing and your fusion playing and, and your punk rock and like everything else because you'll be creating parts, drum parts, that fit in with the music and the rest of the band and what everybody else is doing. And so you need to listen. So when you're practicing these tracks, I want you to try to listen to what you're playing, yes, but at the same time, try to listen to those horn parts cheesy as they may be, listen to those horn parts and see how what you're playing fits in with what's going on on the track. If you like this jazz kind of stuff, check this video out right here. It's a great lesson on kicking the end of one and setting up figures. You're going to want to check that one out because it's going to help you as well. So I'll see you in the next one, and uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. I don't know what I'm going to teach tomorrow. Put it in the comments. What should I teach tomorrow? See you tomorrow.